Hello everybody, welcome to Mr. Lehan Teaches You Stuff. This is Grade 10 Optics Lesson 1, Light as Waves. So light behaves like a wave. Uh, it's very helpful to think of waves in water when we think about waves of light, uh, because in many ways they behave fairly similarly. So we should talk about what a wave is. Uh, waves are disturbances that move energy from one spot to another without moving matter. So when you look out uh, on a lake and you see a ball bobbing around in the water, if you have waves, those waves won't necessarily move that ball anywhere. The ball might just bob up and down in, in one spot if there's no wind blowing it around. Um, so the wave energy might be traveling to the right here, and the waves are moving, but the water itself isn't moving, right? It's not like a river traveling in one direction. These are just energy waves traveling through the water. Another good example is uh, if you take a rope and you flick that rope, the energy will travel down the rope and you'll have a wave traveling down the rope, but pieces of the rope are not actually physically moving down the rope, right? The piece that, was in, that started in your hand is still in your hand at the end. So the disturbance of energy moves through the, uh, the substance, but it's not moving matter as it goes. Now, why is light considered a wave? Uh, there's several reasons. Light reflects like a wave. So we'll be talking about this in later videos. Uh, so light bounces off things. Light refracts like a wave. So when it goes through into a different medium, it will bend and change direction. And light will interact with itself to create interference patterns like a wave. So here's an example of the double slit experiment. Uh, light rays pass through here and then it's like the waves sort of overlap and create giant crests and troughs and stuff. And I'm not sure if we're ever going to talk about this, uh, but there's some really good videos on YouTube. Uh, just look at uh, the double slit experiment. Look that up um, and it explains it fairly well. So now we'll look at some properties of waves. Uh, first off, we'll look at wavelength. And this is the distance from one crest to the next crest. Uh, I guess it could also be from one trough to the next trough or really any one point on a wave to the same point on the next wave would be the wavelength. Amplitude is the wave's height above the rest position. So it's not the height from the bottom of the, the trough. It's just the height from the middle, the rest position. So if there's no waves, the water would be where that dashed line is. It wouldn't be way down in the trough. So that's the amplitude. The amplitude is also the depth below um, the rest position. It'll be pretty much the same as the, the height above. Um, and the higher the amplitude, the greater the energy the wave has. So the higher the waves, the more energy there is. Frequency is the rate at which the wave repeats itself. So frequency is measured in hertz, and hertz is the number of waves per second. So if we say this is one second, um, and we have, what is that, one, two? We've got two crests, in there, or two uh, full cycles of the wave there, so that's two hertz. Wavelength and frequency. Wavelength and frequency are inversely proportional. Uh, and that means as one increases, the other decreases. So if your waves are longer, obviously your frequency is going to go down. So as the, as the waves get bigger, the frequency gets smaller. So the waves happen less often because the waves are longer. That makes sense. Um, the speed of a wave, V, can be determined using this formula. V equals F times lambda, or speed equals frequency times wavelength. So now we're going to look at the electromagnetic spectrum. Um, now light microwaves, radio waves, x-rays, these are all waves of electromagnetic radiation that have different wavelengths. So all these things are basically the same stuff. It's all electromagnetic radiation. The only thing that's different is the length of each wave of that uh, electromagnetic radiation. Um, and we use it differently. So we're just going to go through a couple different uh, categories of electromagnetic radiation and what we use it for. We'll start off with radio waves, which have the longest wavelength uh, out of the ones that we're looking at. And they're going to be way over here at the left side, where the wavelengths are nice and long. Um, 
if you look at uh, any radio, those numbers there are the frequencies that you're tuning into. And I think I'm at around 89 here. I think that's the channel I'm on. So at that frequency, uh, the wavelength is actually around 3 meters. Uh, so if you've ever been driving in a car and the radio is not coming in clearly and you can drive a little bit further up, you know, just drive your car up a meter and it starts coming in clear, that's because you're hitting another crest of the wave uh, of the radio waves that are coming off the radio antenna, wherever that is. Um, after radio waves, we have microwaves. Microwaves have more energy and shorter wavelengths than radio waves. So they're the next ones there. Um, and we all know what microwaves do. They heat up our food. Um, and they don't heat up their food because microwaves themselves are hot. Uh, it's because they cause all the atoms in something to, like in the food, the egg or potato or whatever it is, to start shaking around a lot. Um, but microwaves do have more energy than radio waves. So after microwaves, we have infrared waves, uh, and these are often experienced as heat. So the radiation that comes off of a stove, uh, if you're standing near a stove or off a radiator in your home, uh, would be giving off infrared radiation. Um, and these are found basically just up from microwaves. And interestingly, some animals like pit vipers, such as a rattlesnake, can sense infrared waves. So if a rattlesnake was looking at you, it might see something like this, if you were dancing weird beside a toddler. Um, but those are infrared waves. This is a camera that's been set up to sense infrared radiation. Um, so you can see the different levels of heat coming off of people. All right, after infrared, we have visible light. So visible light is actually just a tiny little bit of the electromagnetic spectrum. Uh, and in that tiny little bit, we've got all the colors. We've got red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet, all that stuff. Uh, but it's actually a very small part of the spectrum that we can see. After visible light, we have UV light. And UV light has more energy than visible light, which is why we get sunburns from UV light. Uh, you don't get UV light from uh, lights in your house because they don't give off a lot of UV light. Uh, whereas the sun does give off UV radiation, so you get sunburns there. So the ultraviolet waves are past the visible light. And what blows my mind is that some animals can see into the ultraviolet part of the spectrum. Now if you think about it, what that means is that after violet, they have other colors. So animals such as this guy, the American kestrel, can see into the ultraviolet range, which means that it can see more colors than we can. So its color wheel will have an extra color or two. Um, and we can't really describe those colors because we have no concept of what they would be like. Right? Describing those colors to us would be like describing red to a person that can't see red. Uh, so these animals can actually see other colors. I think there's other animals too. I believe bees can see into ultraviolet as well. Um, and you may have seen artist renderings of what it might look like, but realistically they can't show us what the colors are uh, that these animals can see because we are unable to see them. All right, after ultraviolet, we have x-rays. These are very high energy and will pass right through flesh, but not bone, uh, which is what makes them helpful in medicine because we can take x-rays of things and we can see what the bones look like uh, but they'll pass right through the rest of your, your fleshy bits. Uh, and last but not least, we've got gamma rays. Uh, gamma rays are extremely high energy radiation. Uh, you don't want to get exposed to gamma rays. Otherwise, you'll turn into this guy. Actually, no, you won't. You'll probably just get cancer. Um, gamma rays have been used to kill cancer cells, paradoxically. And gamma rays are produced by black holes and neutron stars. Uh, so it's very powerful radiation, very high energy radiation. Uh, it's not produced a lot on Earth, and I think a lot of it gets filtered out by our atmospheres, so you don't really run into gamma radiation a lot on Earth. Uh, but stay away from black holes, because they're dangerous. All right, so that's it for this video. Uh, tune in to the next video on color theories.